Hey there, CPO here, and I'm out with the TJ. Uh, and as you can see, it's in a state of disarray. So it left us stranded a, about an hour away from home last night, in the dark, in the rain. Didn't have the tools, time to mess with it. And uh, yeah, it started pouring on us when I was in the parking lot at Target. So had it towed back to the house. And this is my first opportunity to look at it and try and do some quick troubleshooting. Having a multimeter really helps in this case, as does just having some tools. But let me show you what I've come up with so far. I think I've got it figured out. Uh, but let me show you the basic troubleshooting of what I'm going through in case this happens to you. All right, first, the, uh, the problem statement. Uh, basically, um, that. Won't start. Everything lights up like it wants to start, it just won't crank. No click, anything. Uh, did try jump starting it in the parking lot just to see. That didn't work. I did try shorting the starter that should have worked um, because it works now but again it was dark and it was wet and i might have been struggling uh, to get in there and do that so uh, let me show you a couple things number one there is a uh, relay right here for the starter and i actually called a buddy of mine uh, shout out to reed uh, he drives a tj um, and is pretty good at this stuff so just uh, quickly asked him what he uh, what he would recommend he recommended I swap uh, a couple of relays just to make sure that one of the relays doesn't go bad. He's had a relay go bad, uh, like a center pin. So several of these relays are identical. So I just swapped them to see if that made a difference. Did not make a difference. Keeping in mind at the Target parking lot, I did not have a multimeter. So my ability to assess what's going on is pretty limited. Matter of fact, I didn't, I bought a hammer to see if that would help. All right, so in here in the fuse box behind the glove box, there is in this lower right-hand corner, uh, fuse position number 20. You can put a fuse in there and it will basically bypass the clutch safety switch. I took this fuse and just put it down here, see if that made a difference. It did not make a difference. So really that's where I got stuck. Um, I did check, there is a fuse, um, which one is it? This one here is a 30 amp starter fuse. I checked that. Um, outside of that, I'm like, I don't know. Cable's good, um, although this is pretty sketchy. I'm not even gonna mess with it right now. Uh, I'm replacing these, different video, uh, but after getting into this, I'm just gonna replace all of this battery wiring. But uh, I get home tonight, have a little bit of time before the sun goes down to, uh, to check this out. Also have a multimeter, uh, which is helpful. Battery voltage is good. Um, voltage in all the places are good, even including the, uh, the main battery uh, wire to the starter solenoid. Let me see if I can get you a shot down in there. All right, it's kind of hard to see, but down there is the starter solenoid. And you can see two um, posts uh, with cables on them. The one on the left side of the screen is the feed straight from the battery. That is getting 12 volts. The one on the right is the line that goes to the starter. And then what you see above it, it's kind of hard to see this thing right here. Um, that is, an, is a spade connection that I have currently unplugged. There's a wire that goes in there and it's this wire. And that is the starter control wire. That wire comes from your ignition switch, and when you turn the key, that wire sends 12 volt power, uh, which then will uh, push out the gear for the starter. Those other two posts basically become connected as well, which feeds battery power uh, to your starter. So, uh, did some testing there, and uh, what I tried, interestingly enough, and I can demonstrate this for you because I have it all pulled off. All right, so the Jeep's still in neutral. Uh, basically what I did is I just made a little quick wire that uh, will go onto that spade and I plugged it into there. 
So now I have that plugged into there, basically creating my own starter control wire. And, and the other end of that wire is just bare. Now if I touch this to the positive side of the battery, if everything is working good, it should crank. And it does. Now, what that tells me is my starter's good, my battery voltage is good, my relay's good, my fuse is good, all that stuff is good, so why does it not turn with the key? All right, using that same test wire, this time I put a male side on, and I'm gonna plug that into the wire from the ignition. So now I'm tapped into that starter control wire, and what I wanna do is connect that one end to my multimeter, just like that. And then the other end I can connect to a ground And then what should happen is when I turn the key as if I'm gonna start the vehicle, that wire should send 12 volts. Something tells me it's not, which is why the starter's not cranking. Okay, so I just turned the key and uh, yeah, nothing happened. So that means I am running into an issue with the ignition sending power to that wire. All right, so that leaves me, just to double check, because I'm not exactly sure where this fits into the circuit, this is the um, clutch safety switch wiring, so I disconnected it. I just want to check and make sure that that switch is working. Like I said, I'm not entirely sure how this fits into the scheme of things. So I have my multimeter set for continuity. So when I push the clutch pedal, as you can see, I'm getting continuity there, or at least you can hear. Um, so my clutch safety switch is working. So it leads me to one last thing, which is what I suspected at the parking lot. And that is inside this ignition is a actuator pin that is known to break and it doesn't actually activate that starter control wire. That's that pin, I guess, that you turn when you turn the key that makes that connection. So I'm gonna pull this off and see if that's actually broken. And my bet is it's gonna be. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace this, but before I do, I'll show you what I'm doing. So I pulled off the um, steering column cover. There's just a couple of uh, standard Phillips head screws holding in that. And then I removed this, and I'll show you why here in a second. There's basically two Torx, uh, these are T15s that hold that on. You don't have to remove the whole thing, you just need to be able to lift it up to get to this uh, ignition switch here. So this is your, your cylinder for your lock, this is where your key goes into. Your actuator pin for the ignition is underneath here and then your actual ignition switch is underneath here. So the pin assembly is sandwiched in between these two. So we have to remove those to get to that. Um, I went ahead and also bought a new replacement ignition switch since I've got to take it apart anyway. Uh, may as well just replace that. It was only like 17 bucks, so. All right, so here's that actuator pin and ignition switch assembly. In order to um, pull this out, it's basically just clipped in, and I think the easiest thing to do is just apply a little pressure and work it out, and boom, oh, check it out. So yes, this was definitely my problem, because this is broken. Here's the uh, piece that broke off. I don't even know where that goes. Oh, just like that. So this is broken. So that's why when you turn the key, it's not triggering the ignition, which would then uh, engage that starter control wire that we tested earlier that wasn't getting any power. So yeah, there we go.